Ronnie Dale, four wheeling at westernstrade.com and in this video I'm going to run you through what is in my temporary overland expedition, four wheel driving, weekender, electrical box, if that makes any sense at all. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a rough idea of how to make one of these yourself as it's been requested quite a few times. Also it was requested a lot before when I had my big canopy on the back how I did all the wiring but I never got around to doing that so this time I'm going to show you how I have wired this box up and what applications I've used it for and I'm going to do it before I actually rip it out so right now it's still hooked up to all the power and I can show you exactly how I set it up hopefully you guys can get a rough idea of how to do one of these yourself now I'm not going to go into full detail on, on tips and wire sizes and all that, I'll cover it briefly and the reason for that is I'm actually building another box right now. So in a couple of days from recording this video, there will be another big box on this side. So for those guys who are regular followers, you can see there is nothing here now. It's all out. Alright, so I have pulled out a lot of stuff in here to uh, make it less distracting, so to speak. So let's pull the first aid kits out. And here we are, down to the bare bones of what it is. Let's talk about the box first. This is a relatively cheap, lightweight, really lightweight aluminium box from um, Bunnings, which is a hardware store in Australia. If you're not familiar with Bunnings. And this box here is fixed with a lockable lid and the reason for that is then stuff can't jump out and smash around now i did have my first aid kits in here but that's soft bags and they can knock a few things it doesn't really matter so this box here basically it, it um, serves as my lighting for when i'm camping uh, my charging hubs for my phones my camera gear inflating tires but not only is it my electrical system, it's also more storage as well. So in here, I, I carried a few valuables and stuff because this was a lockable um, box and uh, it's quite hard to break into compared to the plastic ones as you can just pop the hinges on them. So let's, uh, let's have a look at all the things in here and then I'll go through how I've actually wired it up because that is the important part that you guys probably want to know. Now I'll run through what's in here first. So this is an inverter, a 400 watt inverter with a peak to 800 watts. Now all inverters have a have a peak level and, and a normal um, sort of flat line running level. Then we have the compressor, twin ARB compressor. This thing here, it draws 40 amps on each compressor, so that's 80 amps total. And then over here, we have a third battery. When I tell you about how I've wired this battery up, I'm, I'm going to be telling you what I've done that's not ideal. So you, you can avoid it because it's not the best way that I've done it. But I'll get, get to that later. Then over here, we have my main switchboard. Uh, so that's a compressor switch. That's my light switch. Let's just jump straight to lights. An amber light. And also have white lights. Now, the reason why this amber light is here is because it's, it's the adhesive has fallen off. So, here's another tip for you. If you're going to stick these um, flexible lights in here, don't rely on the 3M adhesive, um, especially if it's a, the box is black on the outside and you're in a hot climate because just the, the heating and cooling adhesive does not last and it and falls off. So, I haven't bothered fixing it because this is a temporary box and I'm getting pretty close to changing it. So... Back onto amber light, white light. Why do I have both? And why am I going to tell you to have both? White light gives you the best light, and there's more of it. The amber light is to keep the bugs away. Uh, bugs are less attracted to this type of light. They're still going to come, but not as many. Maybe 10% of what you would get with the white light. Now, of course, with the white light, you're going to get a lot more light, but you're going to attract a lot of bugs. Um, so why do I bother having both? Well, sometimes we don't have a lot of bugs, especially in winter, so I'll use the white light. And then this switch here, still on lighting. 
that does that light up there camping light and that serves as my flood beam now everything here is just run off this system and I even have a spare switch here that's not doing anything and I was going to use it for lights on the back but I never bothered doing it because this was a temporary box and there's even room for more switches there as well so there's heaps of room for a lot more switches and then down here we have a volt meter and it also has an amp meter so basically it's telling me how much is being drawn through the amps when I plug something in so on your screen now I've plugged my iPhone in which is attached to the Osmo and it's showing you it's, it's drawing stuff over here we have a 20 amp cigarette lighter plug and a 10 amp down here iPad USB port fuse panel fuse panel and the fuse panels are probably the most important part of your setup and then over here we have um, a mop holder which is pretty handy actually I stick my um, tire gauge there and then my knife used to be held here now you'll note on the back here I have put a um, wooden board and the reason for the wooden board is all I have to do is bolt it in four spots and it's there it strengthens the box for one because this is really thin material and two it gives me something I can screw all this extra stuff onto just with like wood screws so it's really handy and a lot easier to set this stuff up when you got that or oh, something I missed up here that plug here that's a uh, cigarette lighter plug on the other side and there's the back end of it right there where it used to be plugged in now going to show you how it's all wired up and this is probably the most important part that you need to watch if you are intending on doing something like this yourself okay so in order to make sense of what I've done in the back you need to understand what goes on here first then you get an idea of, of why um, I have a cable coming from both these batteries and this one being the cranking battery serving the vehicle and this one here being the um, house battery you could say serving all my uh, accessories and stuff like that okay so before I tell you exactly what these two batteries do uh, they are two separate batteries they're doing two separate things so therefore I have a BC DC charger and it's recommended to have that to run this setup so it can then charge the batteries proper so this it will charge the cranking battery first because that is the battery that the vehicle needs to run the engine that is the most important battery once this is fully charged it will then switch to charging the second battery so in order to have a system like that you need a BC DC charger to do that for you and some of some of these you can even put a solar panel into so it can even charge your batteries while you're not even driving which is pretty cool this is a um, deep cycle battery 110 amp so there's two batteries here cranking deep cycle battery one battery two and then here this is battery three but you know what let's call this battery two and a half because it is parallel to uh, the second battery so it's running with that and it's not proper parallel see proper parallel is picture you have a battery here and a battery here you're meant to run from positive to positive negative to negative to join the batteries and then from there you run to where you need the power I haven't had the luxury of being able to do that because one battery is in the front one battery is in the back so what I've done is I've done a bit of a, a piggyback and this is one of the things that I mentioned at the start you shouldn't do it like that so you could pretty much take the this battery out of the equation I could easily run it off just the front battery but my fridge was sucking a lot of juice in summer and that's why I put this battery in and plus I was charging a, a lot of gear so if you're not charging a lot of camera gear and and, and, and whatnot you can get away with just having the two batteries in the front so here comes the other important part why have I got a a cable from this and a cable from that why not just use that one okay the reason why I can't just use the auxiliary is because I have a compressor in the back so remember before when I said the compressor sucks out 80 amps in total 40 amps each it's a high power unit it needs a lot of power if I ran this off the auxiliary battery which I have in the past you'll just kill that battery you'll eventually kill your deep cycle battery so here is a chart to help explain a cranking battery is designed for high output electrical items 
like a winch or a compressor, like we're talking about now. So to power a compressor, I highly recommend using a cranking battery with the vehicle running. So essentially you are running off the alternator and it's coming through your cranking battery. So as you can see on your screen right now, the cranking battery is going to the power board to its own positive terminal. And then from that terminal, it's going to the compressors and it's powering the compressors. This is being run by the cranking battery. Everything else in here, everything else, apart from the compressor, is run by the house batteries, the auxiliary batteries, battery two and battery two and a half. Again, let's use the drawings to help explain. So, aux battery two and aux battery 2.5, the two house batteries are going to a positive terminal, the same one, and of course to the same negative terminal. From the power board, we then head to the rest of the stuff. So the inverter, the fridge, the lights, the USB po uh, points, and everything else. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so here we are. These two down here, they are MIDI fuses. The bottom one is 80, is an 80 amp. The top one is a 50 amp. So I've opened the bottom one up so you can see it. The top one's a bit of a pain to open. Those wires then go to the back. And here we are. This is a 50 amp uh, Anderson plug, and that's got the auxiliary. This is a 150 Anderson plug, actually it might just be a 100 amp Anderson plug, and that is coming from the cranking battery. Those wires then go into the box on the side there. And this is looking from the other side. All the wires come in there. Now we're looking inside the box. They come through here in these grommets, that stops them from um, being chafed or cut. And then they run in here. Now you will note that I have three sort of terminal lugs. The top one is the earthing wire. Now that's a common earth, that goes to the chassis as well. So all accessories in here, even the uh, compressor, all running off the same common negative, that's fine. Down here. We have the positive from the uh, cranking battery, from that 100 amp Anderson plug going up here. That then goes to the compressor wires, which are fused here. Two 40 amp fuses running along, going into the compressor. So that is the power from the main cranking battery. Then underneath that, we have where the auxiliary power comes in. So one of these wires here is the house battery from the front, battery two, and that goes to this double lug down here. And the reason why it's double lug is because I have battery two and a half here that goes into there. Okay, and then those wires are doing a lot more complex stuff than the um, compressor one. As you'll see here, these thick wires come in, one goes down to this fuse box or fuse panel, and the other goes to this fuse panel. So that's where they are all fused. Now fuses are the most important thing of this whole setup. Okay, so this part here is going to be quite confusing for those who have never tackled an electrical job before, but this is more for the people that have sort of done a bit in the past, you know, done a bit, little bit of wiring on the vehicle. I'm gonna just briefly show you what's behind these casings uh, for where all these um, plugs and stuff are and the switches. So um, for, for those who, who are after all the tips and hints, well, there'll be another video coming soon, if not already. There'll be a link to it at the start and at the end of this video so you can see how I've done the electrical work on the main box, which I'm doing soon. So, let's have a look at this one. Onto the main panel. Now, there's a few shortcuts I've taken here. So, as you can see, here's one of these gangway things for all my negatives, all my earthing wires. So, they're coming from here, down, all earthing on here. And you'll note that I've done, this is a shortcut, I've done one wire here that comes out and then joins onto the voltmeter. And because it's a voltmeter, you need, it's got this extra earth in the middle. And it needs the earth from all the other ones to measure the voltmeter. So whichever ones that has the earth connected to the voltmeter is where it's reading uh, how many amps you're drawing, sorry. It's, it's for the amp meter. So the earth is coming in, earth is coming out, down here, and I've got like a double prong to go to Go to the next one, 
and then that I've joined here because I ran out of double prongs and that goes to that one. So it's actually reading these three points. Now we have something that looks a lot more complex and that's the compressor switch here. Now that has uh, five plugs on it. Now don't worry about these ones because when you get the compressor, you'll get a diagram with how to actually plug this in. And then all the wires are colored so you kind of work it out. Down here you see my light switch. And you'll see it's got the negative, it's got the positive. So that's the earthing wire, that's the power wire. When you hit this, when you turn the switch on, this becomes active. And you can see there's two wires coming out here. The reason why there's two wires is because this, the light is on. So this is a separate light, and this is a separate light here too. Okay? So for LED lights, you can just use more off one switch, you just gotta make sure that um, the switch can handle the amount of amps that it's drawing for those lights. Okay, well I hope that made sense to you. I mean, the, the main point of this video was to show you how the box was sort of set up. Look, when I got into the wiring part, it's a bit hard to explain exactly where everything goes. So I, I hope you were able to keep up and, and follow. Um, look, it's always easier for me because I actually wired it, so I know what all the wires are doing but to sort of try and explain that with a spaghetti of wires in there. Um, I hope you sort of followed it. But look, you can always freeze the screen if you need to. And um, don't stress, there is a video coming out on how to actually do it. And that is when I get this box, which I am really looking forward to because, I don't know, I just really love wiring the vehicle up. So I'm going to have some late nights um, to, to get this done because uh, i got a lot of editing I still need to do as well with other things. So... Thanks for watching. You can support the creation of content like this over here. And if you have any questions about this video, put the questions down below in the comments. Uh, even any electrical questions, I'll try and answer them to the best of my knowledge. And please do subscribe somewhere around here. I'll see you in another video.